Now it's uh, time for our discussion. As we agreed and uh, discussed yesterday, first uh, 15 minutes we'll take to give a brief translation of the morning talk, and then we will open the session for the discussion. So as far as the translation is concerned, as I mentioned, it's the same uh, particular sutta we are going to deal, that is namely the Majjhe Sutta, you find in the Anguttar Nikai, in the uh, Gradual Sayings, Book of Six. And uh, as we uh, took the subject yesterday, it says that uh, knowing the two extremes or two ends, uh, one must uh, dwell upon the middle, but even without much attachment. And if someone can manage such a thing, that is the what the Buddha recognized as the great person, and only he can overcome the, uh, the, the desire, the first cause for this perpetual uh, sansari journey. So therefore, we have to understand the, the two extremes, which are which to be uh, avoided. So yesterday we introduced uh, the subject, and uh, today morning in single talk, I went a little further, uh, basically and uh, primarily uh, to relate it to our day-to-day meditation practice. Uh, when this uh, stanza come into presented into the discussion, uh, one of the monks presented at that time give the interpretation uh, where the as far as the two extremes are concerned. The first one is the contact, pasa in Bali, and the second one is the pasa samude, the origin or rising of the pa, the contact. The middle is the cessation of the contact, and if someone can. Uh, do away with the first two extremes, the contact and the uh, origin of the contact, and can, if he or she can dwell upon the mere cessation, even then, without much attachment to this cessation, if such a person only can be called as the great person, as well as he, the, he or she only can uh, overcome the, the, the sibbani, the the, the weaver, the, the glue, the attachment, the bondage to the sansara. So that means the basic theme uh, deal in this first interpretation is the contact, the, the uh, coming to contact with, and uh, in, the, in the sense the interaction. So uh, meditator understanding and believing that we are going to deal with this contact one has to restrain and come into the subject with one of the neutral objects rather than other uh, pregnant objects like object which is creating the desire and the hate. So whenever we see, whenever we hear, smell, taste, touch and uh, think on uh, object each time, the contact has to happen, then only it comes into our experience, otherwise it is not counted as an experience. So therefore, each and every moment, when and where are these uh, uh, impingements from the senses, external uh, object come and contact with our uh, individual senses, this contact happens. So, being untrained, for long since, very difficult for such an untrained mind to understand the contact. So therefore the Buddha says, as far as contacts are concerned, the eye contact or chakku sampasa is the most trickiest thing in the world, which is costing most of our time. So therefore, if we keep, an, our, keep our eyes open, uh, it will take you for a ride. You have no control. So therefore, in meditation, specifically in the sitting meditation, you are being instructed to uh, close the eyes. That means the faculty of eye won't have any kind of effective transaction. The second one is the ear. 
the listening and that is why the Buddha says select the place where there is no much distracting sounds. And the human beings have no capacity to close our ears. The, there are some animals but not the human. And the third is the smell, fourth is the taste, fifth is the touch and these are the uh, contact where the materiality and mentality come into being very prominently. In addition to that you have the mind though, there are no materialistic part, it is completely mental part, so therefore the beginner is not going to tackle that also. So closing eyes, go to a solitude place, go to an ambient uh, or air where there is no scent, good or bad, and by not tasting anything, what is left behind is the, the bodily contact. So there are also the body have four postures, cardinal postures, standing, walking, lying down and sitting. Uh, the, to keep the mind alert and awake, diligent, and uh, no much of activities, the Buddha prescribed the sitting posture. So therefore we find the, under, to understand, the, understand this, uh, the subject of contact, you have been asked to go to meditation center, close your eyes and make your body fixed, feel comfortable, symmetric and relaxed. And then when you are entertaining and dwelling upon this relaxation, the, if the breath is the natural thing to come, so that is what we consider as the neutral object, the in and out breath. But there may be others also. Whatever may be, naturally mind select is the best specifically under the subject of uh, inside meditation. In Samatha, in the concentration meditation, you introduce object, but in the inside meditation, you let the uh, mind to select the object which is naturally coming into the stream of consciousness. And that is why the breath comes into being. And in the breath also, to keep the breath in face to face with, one has to strive, one has to struggle to keep away from sounds, to keep away from bodily pains, keep away from as the wandering thoughts, daydreaming, fantasizing, and then only if every condition conditions are present, uh, you can maintain the uh, object, namely the inverted and out breath face to face. That is the point we are going to develop the contact. So breath is happening automatically. You try to keep in contact with the face to face with the breath, and they are try to see what is the feeling, what is the experience, what are the characteristics of in breath contact versus the out breath contact. That means to keep sound, pain and thoughts away from the scenery and bring the contact into the main subject, you give attentive approach to the in breath, out breath, in breath, out breath. When that happens, it's a very good opportunity to keep the mind alert, be present, be mindful, be diligent, be vigilant. So subject uh, of uh, contact is now uh, slowly, slowly coming to be. And if you are lucky to keep the breath continuously, in order to specialize this subject of contact, you have to compare, com uh, compare it or delimit it what is the in-breath contact and what is the out-breath contact. When that is happening, uh, this is what we call the middle of the in-breath and the middle of the out-breath. Once the contact come up to a certain grossness only, our rough mind, untrained mind can feel it, touch it and keep face to face it. So therefore at the beginning what you recognize as the contact is the middle of the in-breath and the middle of the out-breath. But if you are lucky to maintain in breath and out breath continuously, then if you are happy, if you are contented to say that the in breath versus out breath is now clear, each and every in breath, each and every out breath, as and when it arises, you have to be alert, you have to be ready to feel it as if you are a newly born baby. This is the first in breath, this is the first out breath life. 
you must be very cordial with it, welcoming with it. Then only uh, you can focus and see how this grossness happens. How is the, the arranging part, the beginning part, the rising part of the in-breath, rising part of the out-breath. This is the uh, one step ahead. You see not only the middle, you can see the beginning and the middle. So when that happens, mind become happy because now you are keeping the object face to face. You are penetrating slowly, slowly into the object and you can see uh, breath as three stages, the beginning, the middle and end. Out breath also has the three stages, beginning, the middle and the end. You are not only trying to see this cross area, you try to see the the arising part, the preparatory part, uh, oncoming part, and then mind has to be very subtle because that is less and less subtle than the middle. And when that happens, uh, your mind is developing, uh, going to get the more and more sap, more and more juice, more and more experience on the breath, and that is why, that is how uh, you develop the mindfulness of the concentration. You steadfast become the mindfulness of the concentration. And still, your mind is hesitant to see, mind is doubtful to see the end part because usually the end means the cessation, end means the destruction, end means the uh, unauspicious thing. So therefore our mind is throughout this perpetual sansaric journey. We avoid it to see. When we are, when a baby is born, we are very happy to see the birth, but when it is passing the middle age and death happens, we feel it is unauspicious. We feel it is something bad. So we are uh, not happy. Not only the, de- uh, um, the birth and death, any seeing, hearing, anything, uh, we so far manage to not to see the end. So this is happening in the breathing exercise also, example uh, meditation also. So therefore you have to keep on focusing uh, the function of the desire, function of the tanna is to make the picture complete by weaving each other of the normal breath with the middle the beginning, not allowing mind to see, mind to dwell upon the end the cessation, the nero, the, the kaya, wire, and therefore one has to dash through to and train, restrain, advert the mind, focus the mind, equally the beginning, the middle and the end. Then only the end will, if at all, going to happen. When that happens, usually begin, beginners, as a lot uh, any vipassana meditator, develop kind of a boredom, develop kind of monotony, develop kind of a fearfulness, uncertainty and uh, irrit- irritation, unsatisfactory nature, because this uh, the cessation part. So therefore at that time you feel uh, discouraged, you feel uh, not enthusiastic, meditation appears very boring, you feel like get up and go, give up and go. The, that is because you are not well instructed, but the meditation is progressing. You, your interpretation, yourself will interpret as my mindfulness is bad, my concentration is bad, therefore everything appears like scattering. But this is the most important middle part, the cessation part. So if someone can dwell upon that, definitely be prepared to go through this border, go through this monotony, go through this uh, fearfulness, uncertainty, cornered nature, outcasted kind of feeling and uh, irritation, all the kind of thing. So this is kind of a bottleneck for the meditators. So even at the gross level, when it happens, uh, one has to have very good uh, moral backing, moral uh, restrainment and the uh, healthy mind, healthy mental situation, then only one can understand this is not my mistake, this is the sign of a progress, sign of progress of inside uh, mindfulness and concentration. 
So when that happens, after if someone manage, it may be around 0.5% or 1% of the to- total yogis can go through this stage. And then once you understand, yet another tap hole is there, uh, pothole is there, that is to say, you may develop kind of a conceit and the pride telling that I am the only person managed to go and understand this situation. All the other fail. So therefore you feel like upmanship. You feel I am better and superior than the other meditators. Like as your conceit can uh, undermine the situation. Or you may develop special kind of desire to see only the situation. And anyone entertaining the beginning and the middle, you feel like inferior. You feel only you are the person can see beginning, the middle and the end. So therefore, that kind of a desire, conceit and views can happen. So, what is the Buddha appreciate is, even if you go and dwell upon this middle, you must not attack and attract and attached to this, the middle, the cessation then only you can overcome this uh, problem of desire, problem of thana. So when that happens, uh, how can you do is by familiarizing it, seasoning it thousand and one time, and not to show your achievement or your uh, qualities. You have to be very humble. You have to understand the Buddha is the, the higher of the Dhamma, I am just a beginner, so then that is only why you become qualified to be a Mahapurisha or the great person, even such an achievement come into being, you never claim that achievement as me, you never claim it as mine, you never claim it as my soul. You understand it is just a revelation of Dhamma. So this is in the sense we consider as the equanimity or equipoised kind of uh, development that is highest in the uh, meditative life. So, uh, if someone develop that kind of approach, uh, he or she will never see any limitation in the sansara. Uh, he can, he or she can dive into the deepest layers of Dhamma because ever progress, progress is going to take place. So, therefore, more and more you progress, you have to be very humble and uh, make your mindfulness fully alert and uh, diligent, not only keep in the meditation track unshaken, but not let the conceit, the pride and the uh, uh, views, as well as your desire, to undermine your situation. So therefore at that level, for my personal experience, association with other noble friends, and getting good instructions are equally important than your meditation. So this is what, uh, in brief, we discuss in the morning uh, for the as per the interpretation, first interpretation of this uh, sutta. Uh, so with that uh, explanation, I uh, will invite everyone to take part in the uh, discussion. Uh, as far as the written exam, these things are concerned, I will start with, but anyway, I will cordially invite you to uh, take part while I, while I am handling these uh, written questions, and then uh, we can make uh, the discussion very lively. Uh, so, may I ask the opportunity to yeah. share and uh, ask the questions? Uh, Listening to your, your teaching, as you said, um, one afraid to to see the ending. Yeah. Especially they think because afraid to die. Yeah. yeah. And I I have a friend who practicing the Anapanasi for more than ten years. And once she got the cancer in abdomen. And then um after hearing for some time, the condition came to severe condition. Yeah. And she kept practicing the breathing in, breathing out. 
and when the, it seems to, to be dying, she said she's very much um, suffering of the struggling, which will release breathing and holding breathing, which is very much suffering. I would like to ask you, how can one develop, um, uh, not to, not to holding, just release it naturally to die? So that uh, one experience, it is not happening to me, but uh, I, can, I remember Godin told me when I was in Nilambe, uh, he used to go to the cancer hospital for and talking with the uh, terminal patients. And uh, he never talk about any religion, no spirituality, he just go and chat, just to see the dying people. No one is taking care, those who can, they have already gone to the parents or the relatives, those who have no uh, support, they are waiting at the world. So he used to go there. And after long rapport, but there is no much of people remaining to have a long rapport, one or two days time, they are dying. They are at the terminal. So one day he used to talk with one Tamil lady, she is not Buddhist, and ask, and she said that it is an enormous excruciating pain. But what to do? But there is no way. It is pain. And I feel desperate, I feel irritated. But to do this, Mukherjee has seen that some of the other she accepted, whether she hate the pain or not, the pain is pain. And at last he has told, can you see the pain, take the pain at a distance, get a distance from the pain. Just like uh, uh, the surgeons, they have to get the clinical distance from the patient, otherwise they can't do the surgery, am I correct? It's a condition. The surgeon must have a clinical distance from the pain. So that is the surgeon and the patient. But here the patient and the surgeon is the same. The same person has to see the pain at a distance, getting a distance. And when she is telling and she never understood it seems, but anyway she was very happy with God. And next time when he goes there and she was waiting till he comes and says that though the pain is very unbearable, now she can see the distance. The pain is something, the suffering person is something. So whenever the distance comes, you feel kind of a hilarious feeling. Now there is a gap. And then the Godwin has told, this is an easy thing, unless otherwise you are in a such a desperate situation, that is what we do in meditation. When the pain happens, we see it as not me, not mine, not my soul. When the sound happens, we contemplate to say, this is not me, this is not mine, this is not my soul. And ultimately the breath also, not me, not mine, not my soul. Under such circumstances, you can see the cessation part. Otherwise you are tensed. You see the rising pain and you collapse. And next moment again another pain happens, you collapse. You don't know, each arising means the cessation of the early part. That you don't see. You won't see because your mind is already bankrupt. The mind is not prepared to see. But that lady, some or the other, prepared and she was very happily relating with the Godwin. And next time when the Godwin goes, goes there, she has already died. But anyway, Godwin says, out of my whole experience, he is the only one got to some positive response. I mean, they are not meditative. They have not done any mindfulness. Just get the idea that the distance from the pain. So, in the meditation also, uh, at the beginning, if your mind is not prepared with mindfulness, even the little little pain collapses everything. And you hate the other people, then people are breaking my meditation, the mosquito comes and the fly comes and kind of thing. But when, the, when you go to a certain extent, you feel these little things you can bear it up. But bigger pains, middle kind of pains, still a problem. After a while, the middle also, no problem. And the Buddha says, uh, you have to experience the Zinking, dying pain in sitting posture. Next day only you will become sotapan. Till that, there is no meditation, no progress. As far as you have the love, as far as you have the desire for this body and the hatred to the pain, you never go to the, the Gotra Bhujana or the uh, breakage of the lineage. So pain is the pivot. If you can go bear more and more pain, you understand the truth of suffering more and more. So therefore you have your threshold value, your bearability, 
uh, your resistance to the pain is slowly slowly increasing therefore no one can control you by punishing by hinting because you you are beyond that that is how slowly slowly vipassana meditation helps me so under such circumstances the patient whether she can understand or absorb this idea or not it's it's a luck by chance but anyway some that kind of a terminal patients uh, they do marvelous things so they are who without any discrimination you have to just give the the technique just give the the adventurous challenge and some take it up and even the small children uh, small children they take very easy it seems than the elderly people because they have not much developed the egoistic idea yet so therefore they understand easily but the elderly people pass in the middle age uh, accept at last till that they refuse it telling that accepting pain means that is something uh, inferior something kind of a uh, accepting the defeat like accepting the negative side so therefore they are always fighting so that is why the death be has become a such a big cult such a big uh, event uh, because that uh, they know that uh, at the death you have to undergo big suffering and the meditators are slowly slowly rehearsing the death let the, de- the dying happen each and every breath end of each breath is a death Each each in breath, each out breath is a death. So in between two breaths is the nibbana. The gap is the nibbana. So to go to the gap, you have to see the cessation. But if you are not trying to see or going to cessation, you will never. If you are always try to see the beginning, you will never see the gap. So experience the gap means that you become a kind of a maturity. So you have to try and give the idea to the patient. give ball don't worry about that whether she is ready to prepare or not we can just give it so we are going to finish the discussion